What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining me on a COVID edition install video. Today, we'll be installing the Toyota OEM trailer hitch for the 2019 and up Toyota RAV4s. This one, you lose no ground clearance compared to the Kurt hitch that I used before. Since I live in an apartment, um, installs definitely take a lot more prep time. So I'm headed over to my car right now to move it from one side of the complex to the other, load up some gear, and then head back to the garage to do the actual install itself. I'll check in with you guys in just a second. All right, everyone. So this is the Toyota OEM trailer hitch for the RAV4s. Your hardware, this is some of the mounted hardware. Uh, there's some shoes in here as well. Um, and then there's another box, which is actually the uh, ball hitch. Um, I left that in the apartment just because I don't need that right now. The basics of this install is we will be removing this whole bumper fascia right here from this end to the other end, including this whole trim piece down here. The reinforced bumper that is about right here on the inside is going to be removed and replaced with the trailer hitch. And then down here, we're going to cut a square out for the hitch to actually pop out. So as you can see, we're gonna to have to cut into the bumper instead of having the hitch hang down below the bumper. So as you can see, there's no, it doesn't, there's gonna be no effect to your ground clearance at all. Before I started, I did a little bit of research. Um, I found a video from a, another YouTuber that specializes in RAV4 takedown, teardowns and installations. I watched his video. I'll link that video right here. My video is not going to be so much a step-by-step -step tutorial like his is. It's gonna be more of an overview and a walkthrough. So if you want a more detailed video, I would highly suggest checking out his video. I will get to work on mine and I'll check back in with you guys in a second. To remove these trim pieces, you're gonna remove these push clips. There's three on the driver's side and there are four on the passenger side. This is the passenger side one. And then also a 10 millimeter bolt at the bottom of both of them. And then once I took them off, I, so I don't lose any of these pieces, I just kind of put them together as I put them aside instead of creating one big pile later and then confusing the clips and bolts when I am putting it all back together. The next thing you're gonna do is remove these, the fender trim. And to do this, you can simply just pull them off gently. And then you'll notice once you get in there, As you see, once you get in there, there's some adhesive in there. Um, and you can probably just remove it all completely. I have some extra double-sided tape, but let me, uh, I'll put the camera down and get this trim removed so I can use both hands and I don't break anything. And I'll check back in with you in a second. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four of these body clips, and then there's a white one in there. What you need to access in here is this push clip right here. And so you'll pop this out and you will do the same on the other side and we should be able to loosen this end of the bumper. All right, this is the driver's side. As you can see, I've already been able to pull off the clip. And then from here, we're gonna to go to the bottom of the bumper and there's going to be two clips down here. So down here, you'll remove these two uh, yours will probably look better than mine. I have scraped my bumper, so it's kind of crushed. Should be able to remove these clips, and then those should be the only clips that you remove from the bottom down here. All right, next, you're gonna remove the trim piece that is usually here. This can just be easily pulled off. 
Use the other side. Just three clips and it should come out freely. Once you have that cover removed, you'll have access to this bolt. You're gonna have, this is a 10 millimeter bolt. You're gonna remove this one, remove this one, this one, and this one. The two at the top are 10 millimeters. These down here look like they're fill-up tips. Once you take those four bolts off, so from either side, start pulling outwards. And there are, I think, three or four of these clips here on this side. Pop these out. And then so once, what I did is once I got these clips off and I gave myself a little bit of space, what I did was just kind of gently tug it towards the rear and all the rest of the plastics unclip along this way going outwards. Same on the other side. Three, so if you start on this side, unclip these three and pull rearwards, straight backwards, so that it just shifts the plastics back and there should be nothing else holding the bumper on once you've taken off all those clips that we've gone over. And here's the reinforced bumper for the rear. This is what we're going to remove next to install the hitch. Okay, and so the next step to remove this steel bumper is removing these bolts. There should be three on this side and three on the other side. It uses a 14 millimeter socket. And once you remove these bolts, it should just come straight out. So let me take this off real quick and I will check in with you in another second. So now that we've deconstructed the bumper, the next step is to actually start installing the hitch itself. One thing to note on the OEM hitch compared to the eco, the eco hitch and the Kurt hitch is those aftermarket ones uh, typically get held on with four bolts. Uh, this one, you're going to actually assemble a few mounting locations. Um, so it's it's more than just this piece itself. There's going to be a couple arms that support this to the frame itself. All right, so I've gone ahead and started installing the brackets. This is the right-hand side, passenger side. Um, you'll, you'll get two of these. There's an inboard and an outboard uh, hanger. The left-hand side, as you What's important to note is on the right-hand side, you have this little extra hole down here. The left-hand side does not have that. And so these are the inboard ones. So these are the ones that'll be on the inboard side of the exhaust panel, exhaust pipe. And then there's going to be an outboard one that you will mount up on the other side of the support beam down here. I'll get a better view, let's see. So there's that beam right there. These are 19 millimeter bolts. There's one there, one in the rear, and then on the other side of this beam is where the outboard one will go. So let me get that second one installed for this right-hand side, and then I will show you what that looks like. All right, I have the right-hand side installed. Here is the inboard side again. The bolts. And then you can see the outboard one. See how it comes down and across and meets up with the inboard one right here. Check the view from this side. Um, there it is. Then I'll go ahead and do 
the left hand side, it should be exactly the same. And then I'll check back in with you once all of it's put together. Okay, as you can see, I have the hitch itself loosely mounted. You can see how they bolt in right there on the right hand side. So on the left hand side, uh, it's important to note that there is some variance in the, the fit uh, across some of the models. And so what they do, what Toyota does is uh, includes a set of shims that you will uh, place in between these uh, brackets. Mine, I'm probably gonna need at least one shim. If you look towards the rear, you can see a little bit of a gap. These shims are about a millimeter each. And so that should fill that in. And then once I get that in there, I'll go ahead and tighten everything up and check in with you guys uh, for the next step, which is going to be cutting the bumper to accommodate this. This is probably the scariest part of the install. Um, and it's going to be cutting and opening in the bottom of the bumper to allow the hitch to poke through. And within the instruction packet that comes with the hitch itself, um, there's a template in there that you can use to cut this all out. And that's what I did here. An important thing to note is the, the template itself is more of an L shape like this. What I did was essentially just straightened out this line right here so that I only have this opening here. This opening is for the factory trailer harness and I don't plan on using that. So I just need the opening for the hitch and that's why I'm gonna have it cut straight down this way and still have all this right here. And so to cut this, I will be using a Dremel. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't have, I live in an apartment and I don't have a place to plug in a Dremel here in the garage. And so what I did is bring out my little portable camping power and hook my Dremel up to it. And so I'll go ahead and cut this out and hopefully it is all flush and I'll put this bumper back on and we will see what it looks like. Wish me luck, I'll see you guys in a second. Straight lines first. I'll get a hit and head and hit this. And then I also have some sandpaper to clean up the um, clean up the edges. But it's important to note that the kit, the hitch kit, comes with a little trim piece that goes around all of this uh, plastic area that you cut. So uh, of course you should try to make it as clean as possible. But you were gonna also cover it all up with the trim piece, so you don't have to make it 100% uh, perfect. And just a few more cuts, and I'll check back in with you in a second. Have it. Uh, there's the rough hole. I'm gonna go back in right now with some sandpaper to clean up these edges and make sure I kind of round off the edges a little bit more. And then we'll go ahead and stick the bumper back on. It wasn't overall it wasn't too bad. The Dremel cut it through it pretty quick. With the Dremel, I'm using one of these diamond cutting bits. I don't know if you can, we can get it in focus. And the battery itself has been holding up its, barely didn't even make a dent to the power. And I've been able to run it at full power. So it, if you have one of these, it definitely helps as like a little mobile workstation. If you are in a confined urban area like I am in the apartments. <laughs> About two hours into the installation, I went ahead and put the bumper back on. It's the same way that we took it off, just in reverse order. You can see you got the clips back on, bolts back in. The only thing I haven't put back in is the trim piece that goes down here. I'll do that right now. Just wanted to show you guys the step, what it looks, what the uh, hitch looks like now. So here is the hitch in the hole. Um, it still looks a little rough. I haven't got the piece, I haven't got the trim yet. Um, that's actually inside. I have to go back upstairs to go grab it. 
Um, but overall, I'm very happy with the way it looks. You can see there's not any loss of ground clearance like the Eco Hitch or the Kurt. Give you a side profile. Side profile wise, it still sits above the exhaust. And as you can see here, I didn't cut out that extra piece here for the, uh, for the wiring harness, just cause I'm not gonna be using it. And it's got, the hitch came with a Toyota hitch cover. So that's pretty cool. It is a two inch hitch. I believe it's a class two, which is, I would say only con compared to the the current or the aftermarket ones. I believe they're, uh, I believe they're uh, class three, and this is a class two. But I'll go ahead and get that trim piece and get everything cleaned up and show you what everything looks like, what the final product looks like. But overall, I'm pretty stoked with how it came out. And so there you have it, the Toyota OEM hitch for the. 2019 and up RAV4. This is the trim piece. The trim piece is very similar to the noise reduction trim that Princey sells for, for the front fairing of the Princey racks, actually. So if I had to do this over again, um, I would recommend actually putting this on before putting the bumper back on. A little tip for getting these around the edges, what I did was on the other side of this trim piece, I went ahead and just cut a slit down the middle so that it bent easier on the backside and that allowed it to curve a lot, um, a lot more. But if you go ahead and put this in before putting the bumper back on, you probably won't even need to do that. It'll be a lot easier. And so I would highly recommend putting the trim piece in before putting the bumper back on. Learn from my mistake and save yourself some heartache and uh, risk any risk to cutting your fingers like trying to mold this uh, metal trim around. So keeping in mind that I have a lift kit installed on this rig, the hitch itself cleared about 14 inches off of the ground and the recovery hooks that you see here measured at about 12 and a half inches off of the ground. Shout out to Fred, AKA Durf Wagon. He got our all wheel drive boys license plate stickers printed out and sent some over. So I have a handful of those to be able to pass out. The first five people to leave a comment in the comment section below, I'll go ahead and send you some of those stickers. And I still intend on doing a what's in my box video for you guys for this Pelican box so you can see the kind of the everyday gear that I carry on there. So thank you all for checking out another video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little quarantine install video. I do have a few parts lined up waiting to be installed and a couple new products to review. I hope you guys stick around, hit that subscribe button and, and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about this rig that you want me to do a specific video on. Until the next one, I'll see you guys next time.